Hello there. Oh my goodness. I don't like this lighting. It makes me look wrinkled. <laughs> I'm only 39 years old. Mm. Okay. I'm stalling. Uh, you can see my beautiful chair hanging in the background there in front of the fireplace. And today I'm going to share about uh, what to do in the courts of heaven. What to do when you don't know what to do, when you are not living like heaven on earth, when things are not going well, when um, you just are sick and tired of being sick and tired, of your, yeah, the enemy is coming against you, you're not getting the promises that God gave you, you're not uh, having prayers answered, you're not having the provision that God promised you. I'm going to go over, uh, in the courts of heaven, what things to repent of. Because oftentimes, if we know about the courts of heaven and we go to the courts of heaven, uh, they're pretty fast we think of, well, what else, why is something still not happening? What, what am I missing? And I was going through a situation and I asked God the same question. Okay, I repented of all the lists I found under Terry uh, Spencer, all the lists that I found under going to the courts of heaven, and I still, I had lots of awesome break, breakthroughs, but I was still being harassed in some areas and I couldn't figure out why and I I asked God what is it that I need to know or that I'm missing okay what is it that I'm missing about the courts of heaven I, and and I didn't know what else I could repent of so I prayed about it and God gave me a list and he kept building onto this list and people would ask me and so I have a list of that and you can get this list uh on a download at the end of the video when I post my live video I'm going to post uh, where you can get this PDF file to download and use for yourself for, for, so first of all let me quickly review the, the, the courts of heaven a lot of people have a problem with the courts of heaven they're just now stepping into it because they think well the blood of Jesus washed away all my sins so why do I have to go to court you're free well the reason is because Satan is a legalist and he will find any loophole any thing in your history that was that he could get his foot in to use against you anything in your bloodline that he could use against you anything in your history he can use against you he's going to he has teams of angels searching this out so they can keep you from the promise of God so that you think that God is withholding it from you and it's not God it's the devil and the reason the devil can do this is because he has something legally on you he is a legalist so let me get a drink real quick. Mm. Lemon water and ginger. I'm on a keto diet. I love lemon water and ginger. Mm. I've been doing a consultation before this, so my voice is a little bit dry. Okay. So what you do, if you look in the Bible for legal terms, all of the Old New Covenant Old and New Covenant both talk about legal terms. It's a legal contract. It's a, a legality. It's a covenant of love. But God made rules so that he could keep his people safe and prosper them. And Satan finds loopholes and uses that against you. So what I'm going to go over is what loopholes he finds and how to close those loopholes. Okay. So um, maybe I should finish up a little bit about the courts of heaven uh, so what you do is you trust your imagination you trust the Holy Spirit in you as your leader and your guide and you go to the courts of heaven and you repent of whatever God showed you before you go or while you're there and I find it easier to lay in my bed especially after a dream or understanding and just repent of that whether it's for me personally or for my bloodline and then I go to the courts of heaven and I've already done all the work. I just, you know, repent of all that stuff. And then I go to the courts of heaven and ask for a judgment against the enemy who has had a legal loophole and ask him to apply the blood of Jesus. And when he applies the blood of Jesus to give me a verdict, uh, the blood of Jesus makes me innocent even though I'm guilty. The blood of Jesus takes away that sin. And so I am free from the consequences of that sin that I repented of either in my ancestral line or myself personally. And then I ask for a verdict. And these are some things, when you go into a brick door, sometimes you think, well, I can't think of anything I need to repent of. And God gave me a whole bunch of stuff uh, that we all can repent of if you are still not living like heaven on earth. 
Okay, and if you want to understand more about the courts of heaven, go to Terry uh, Spencer. Is that his right name? All of a sudden, I keep thinking of Terry Fader because I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> and Terry Fader is a famous ventriloquist that I know. <laughs> so keep waiting to say Terry Fader. So I think it's Terry Spencer and Mike Pearson and a bunch of other names. At, on the last page here, I have a bunch of links So you, to all the other people that teach about the courts of heaven, how to get their books and everything. So you can do more research. So let's start. Now, once you find out that you can't think of anything more to repent of or you're having a, a problem with a situation in your family, almost all the time it is some kind of curse passed down to you through the generational lines. Okay, so here are some of the things that you need to do. Number one, check your biological family history, okay? Now, what country is your family from? What wars originated from that country? What history does that country have? And what are the people in that country known for? What do they worship? Like if your ancestors go back to, I'm uh, historically wise, my ancestors are German, Irish, and Scottish. So I need to go into the, uh, what God showed me about the Germans is there were um, people who fought uh, in the German war. There are people that came against us and, and cursed us who fought in wars. And then the German people, I had to repent of one of my ancestors uh, was in the German war as a German and had involvement in Nazi camps and killing. And I had to repent of that. God showed me, uh, I think it was like, like a love triangle or something also uh, about something to do with German. So you want to go back in your natural biological history and find out about that country of orig origins. Number two, you want to check your, um, what do you know about your mother, father, brother, sister, aunts, uncles? What stories can you find out? I know in particular, for example, I remember my father telling me about his father, which was my grandfather or great-grandfather, he, he was telling me about, that he had a peg leg and that he would walk one day that they snuck up in the loft and the brothers were fighting and the one brother thought the other brother was under the loft, so he threw a bucket of water dumped a bucket of water down the ladder onto what he thought was his brother, but it was his grandfather. And his grandfather chased him around the barn with his peg leg. And so stories like that, maybe within that story, that created a, a spirit of trauma in somebody. So the more stories that you can learn from your relatives about your relatives, the more tools that you have that you can repent of. And it doesn't matter if you repent of something that the devil is not using and that is not illegal in the devil's terms, it doesn't matter. It still clears up your, your clears up you. So you can't overdo this, okay? Okay, uh, number, let's see what else. Okay, what trauma, sicknesses, histories, and illnesses, mental and physical, are in your natural family, your brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandfather? Those uh, show that there is some kind of... of um, Legal opening, if you have a history of diabetes or a history of heart disease or a history of trauma, anytime you go into the hospital, that opens the door for a spirit of trauma to attach itself to you. You need to command it to go and repent for agreeing with what the doctor said and so on. So number two is, what do you know about your biological family? Okay, all their histories, their stories, do research, ask questions, find out about what trauma, what, what cults they were involved in, were they involved in the Shriners, the Masons, secret societies, were they involved in the occult or cults, uh, find that information out, do your research, find out, now this not only shuts the door of legal activity of Satan holding against you, but it opens your gateways, your gateways, we are considered gates and doors, and your gateways are physical, I mean our spiritual and in your soul and in your physical body. And for example, in your physical body, sex is a gateway. When you have sex with someone else, intercourse, every spirit attached to them is coming onto you. You took a part of their soul and gave them a part of your soul. You need to repent of that. Everybody that you had sexual intercourse with, those are gateways. Um, uh, what you see, hear, taste, feel, and smell, and your emotions are all gateways. So, you know, ask the Holy Spirit if there's any anything blocking that so that the Holy Spirit can flow out of you and walk in supernatural power. But I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, so number three, repent of individual sins.
sins, and this is really important, word curses are anything that you said negative about anybody else. Anything that you said that makes somebody else look less in someone else's eyes is a word curse. And not only does it hurt them, but it hurts you. Because you are proclaiming over them something that is not God's destiny. And your mouth was made for blessing, not cursing. So repent of all the word curses that you agreed with and spoke over. For example, if you ever said to your child, oh, you're nothing, you're just like your father, you're never going to amount to anything. Or somebody spoke over that over you, repent of it for them, repent of it for yourself. Because those are word curses, they are real. They really affect you, they really open doors. Okay. Um, repent of agreeing with anything that uh, the enemy has said. Uh, for example, if you go to the doctor and he says that you have this problem and you sit there and you agree and you start telling your friends, I have this problem, pray for me. I have this problem, pray for me. And you tell 20 people, 20 times you confess something that was not God's destiny for you. If you're going to say that, say, the doctor said that I have this problem, but I'm believing that that's not God's destiny for me. I'm believing that by the stripes of Jesus I have been healed. You know, something like that. Okay. Um, repent of wrong mindsets, strongholds. Repent of all negative emotions. Because negative emotions create stuff in your body. I need to write something down. God just told me another one. Okay. <laughs> that creates uh, physical things in your body. Repent of agreeing with wrong words that did not agree with the destiny that God has for you. Repent of things that you allowed your eyes to see on TV, in billboards, in magazines, newspapers. Repent of things that you've allowed your ears to hear. Um, in the radio, TV, anywhere, uh, gossip, whatever. Repent of those things that God brings to your attention. Number four, use the Bible as a tool to repent. Start in the New Covenant, go through the Bible, find things uh, that you can repent of. Uh, for example, uh, like if you start in Ma uh, Matthew, Mark, you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is really the Old Covenant because Jesus didn't die yet. So start Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Start right after John, and go through each book, find things in there that, that it says that God doesn't like or, or it causes trouble or opens doors or you, you shouldn't do it as a... As a believer, for example, uh, you might want to repent of things like homosexuality uh, or a debased mind or uh, lying or, you know, just different stuff God will bring to your attention. But use these as a template. Use this as a jumping off and a starting point. Um, one of the things that God showed me that was really unique was I was, I was counseling some people, some, two different situations of counseling people. And... <clears throat> They were telling me their family history, something that their child, their grown child was doing wrong and that annoyed them. And, that, and, and I said to them, God said to think of all the emotions that child is feeling that's going through that experience and all the emotions that you're feeling and then repent of that. For example, my daughter, for, I'm not saying this, I'm saying, for example, somebody might say, my daughter's into, um, uh, and she brings home a different guy every night. So uh, I would think of this. Okay, how does my daughter feel? My daughter is looking for love. So we're going to think about love. Okay, she's looking for uh, attention. She's looking to be needed. Okay, so how can I pray about that? So Father, I repent of not loving my daughter like I should. I repent of, of, of not being there for her when she's needing me to tell her how wonderful she's doing, that she's valuable and she's loved. And so... Think of those emotions that somebody that you, you, oops, somebody that you want to repent or negative emotions. Think of, of what they're feeling, oops, and repent of those things uh, that you didn't do it or fulfill it or whatever. It kind of, I hope you kind of get my drift. If you get my drift, say, yeah, I understand. Um, okay, so you can go through the Bible and go back over uh, uh, that opens, you know, everything in the Bible, that'll, that'll give you a lot of ideas what to repent of. Number five, what about the property that you live on or the house that you live in? Did you know that the house, that they say that, that the house that you live in, the walls maintain, all the words that were ever spoken in that house are absorbed into that wall because it's electromagnetic um, 
fields it's it's vibrations words are vibrations and they stay in the walls so you might want to repent of the things that were spoken in your house the events that happened in your house before you had your house and after you had your house uh, and all the words that we've ever spoken are out there they they never disappeared those vibrations those words that we spoke every radio transmission every tv transmission every words we ever spoke are out there they have proved that they are out there uh that they never disappear that's why you can turn on uh, a radio and receive the transmission because the transmission is out there you just need the tool to receive that transmission so uh think about the property that you live on what happened on the property was it an indian sacrificial ground um was it dedicated to the devil was there a murder there was there you know what happened in your house um what happened to the people building your house uh, and and so on because we're all interconnected so those are some other things uh, to to uh, repent of now number six is and this was proven scientifically number six what things have you brought home from sales auctions got given to you by a friend think about that ask the Holy Spirit um, if there are spirits attached to those things every time I get something I buy something used I always command every spirit attached to it to go back to where it came from so there might be some videos there might be some clothing there might be something in your house uh, some kind of a statue that was ded dedicated to a god or that represents a god or represents a religion that you might want to get rid of uh, so that you can walk in the supernatural things of God that you can have everything and access everything the blood of Jesus gave you to have Satan might use that as a tool legally against you. Think about the movies that you watch. Um, I have to repent of that a lot sometimes. Okay, so um, number seven. This is something God told me just today. Knowledge. Well, actually, this is something he's been teaching me for quite a while. I've been doing looking at this for quite a while, and it's very fascinating. <clears throat> knowledge. Um, where have you been getting your knowledge? It's a really big one. Have you been getting your knowledge from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Okay. When you have a symptom on your body, where do you go? Do you go to the internet to see what that symptom means? And then do you start getting in fear about that symptom? Or do you go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, what is this? What does it mean? And how do I get rid of it? Okay. So where are you getting your knowledge from? Are you getting your knowledge from the knowledge of good and evil? Or are you getting your knowledge from being led of the Holy Spirit and eating from the tree of life? Okay, very, very important. Because you got to remember that Satan is the God of this world. So what does that tell you about a lot of the information out in the world? Okay, think of pharmaceutical. Think how they figured out how to make money by covering up your symptom, which causes you to have more symptoms and need more medicine instead of going to the root of the problem and fixing the root that's just one example of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and i'm not saying medicine is bad thank god for medicine and i'll use it in an emergency situation uh, but not not if it's not emergency not if it's not emergency situation i will try to use it you know be led of the holy spirit i'll use uh, other things that are natural and get to the root of the problem ask the holy spirit is does your knowledge when you have a situation does your first response go, oh my God, and and go to the specialist of the world? Or is your first response is, oh my God, thank you, Lord, show me what to do, okay? So what tree are you eating from? Do you know what the word symptoms means when you have a symptom on your body? It means a physical or mental feature that is regarded as an indication of a condition or disease, particularly such a feature that is apparent to the patient. Now, isn't that interesting? Okay, symptoms are often lies. Symptoms are Satan sometimes testing you to see what you're going to do. If you're going to agree with him or if you're going to agree with God's destiny. Now, I did not say don't go to the doctor or the dentist or the hospital. I'm just saying now before you need it, start practicing and start asking God. Start asking the Holy Spirit. He's in you to teach you. And by the way, one of the things I asked the Holy Spirit was, Holy Spirit, what's the difference between the work you do and the work the angels do? Because sometimes when I pray, I don't know whether to command angels, ask angels, tell angels, or ask the Holy Spirit. And this is what he said. The Holy Spirit works from the inside out. The Holy Spirit works with my thinking, 
my mentality, my understanding. The angels work on the outside, orchestrating and setting up situations and circumstances, physically and manually moving people into the right places and the right strategies, where the Holy Spirit works from the inside, empower, giving us power from the inside, using our body as a vessel to touch the world on the outside. Okay. Okay, then the next thing is um, dreams. Number eight, God talked to me today. He said, dreams are an awesome tool that God has given to speak to us. And the Bible confirms that. Pay attention to your dreams. When you are going through trauma, when you are going through the same situation over and over and over, and it doesn't change, you went to the courts of heaven, you're not getting answers, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you in a dream and write down your dreams. And don't make it a complicated thing. If you're asking him to reveal to you what the cause is and he he shows you something, take that as that is the cause. Repent of whatever he shows you. Now let me give you an example of what a dream I had this morning. And that's why I added dreams on here. Uh, this morning I had, I've been asking the Holy Spirit what's been hindering me in a certain area of my life. And so I always interpret, almost always interpret my dreams if I feel they're important. And I pretty much have an answer right away. That's one of the clues to know that this is a Holy Spirit dream is I get the answers right away. But it didn't used to be like that. I had to think, what does the symbol mean to me? And, you know, ask the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I had to look it up and see what the symbol meant. And then I said, yeah, yeah, that means that to me too. So this is a dream he showed me. Because I wanted to know what is the legal entry that Satan was holding against me in a particular circumstances. The scene was a schoolroom, and oftentimes in my dream, I'm in school, always in school. Either I'm on a big bus, dri driving a bus, or being I uh, driving a van. I drive a white van in my dreams all the time. I have a white van, and I'm always on a bus, and I'm always in school, almost always in school. And um, this is one of the what he showed me. I was in a schoolroom. I was on the second floor, which means I was in a heightened place, a spiritually high place, learning from the Holy Spirit. And I felt as though I was being, uh, my learning was being oppressed. And the first scene was a, there were people from another century when they did those, like the, the dance of the kings and queens. They did a dance when they hold their hands and they circle each other. And I didn't see the dance, but I felt that it was at a dance. And one woman got jealous of another woman, and she picked up a rock and smashed the lady in the side of the head with a rock and killed her. Then the next scene was, these words were said, said to me, a Muslim man was killed in, the, in this room previously. And that was meaning the room, the school room that I was trying to learn from. Okay, so when I woke up, I repented of my ancestors' spirit of jealousy and murder in the situation of one woman killing another woman that happened in centuries down my in my bloodline and then I repented for generations back that have killed uh, that that a Muslim man was killed in the room that I was trying to learn from I repented of those things and I knew that uh, that that was what the dream was about and so pay attention to your dreams uh, symbols and signs, er, everything almost always is some kind of symbol and sign. Uh, if you see, if you see a dream of one of your kids dead, don't think, "Oh my God, my kid's gonna die." Most likely, it's a symbol of your kid dying to the things of the world, uh, and and being raised up in Christ, or that he's dead to not hearing something. Don't think that it's a dream that Satan's gonna kill your kid. Of course, you can. Plead the blood of Jesus around your kid and send the angels and everything else. But don't freak out because almost most likely that never is what it's about. Okay, so interpret your dreams. And one thing about dreams is the Holy Spirit that came upon uh, Daniel to interpret dreams is the same Holy Spirit that is inside of you and we have a better covenant. So you have a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment and a spirit of dream interpretation. Okay, so trust the Holy Spirit in you. Call out the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you have given me a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment in all things and how to interpret dreams. And I thank you that you're going to show me and give me understanding of what this dream means. Okay. And number nine, <clears throat> praying in tongues. I need to drink a water. Hold on a second here. <laughs> mm. Okay. Number nine, praying in tongues. I am an author of over four dozen books, and a lot of them are best-selling books. 
And the way and the reason that I wrote so many books is I spent lots of time praying in tongues. And when you pray in tongues, you get revelation knowledge. You get understanding in whatever it is you're seeking knowledge about. So praying in tongues reveals hidden things, reveals secrets, reveals even motivation of your own heart. It reveals things. It takes from the spirit realm and it brings it up into your understanding. So praying in tongues is another tool that you can use to uh, have understanding of the courts of heaven. Excuse me. Now, if you haven't ever done this before, this is what I do when I get lazy. I set my phone timer for 10 minutes and I look at it, walk around the house and I pray in tongues for 10 minutes. By the time 10 minutes are up, I'm so into it, I set my clock for another 10 minutes and, and another 10 minutes. But start with 10 minutes a day and, and time it. And keep focused on praying in, in the Spirit. And you will begin to get so many revelations and answers and deliverances and healings and energy and ministry. And, and well, the Holy Spirit just said something to me. He said, the more honor and the more attention you give to something, the more you will have it. So the more you pray in tongues, the more tongues will get easier for you the more you will have revelation knowledge. Just like when I started uh, asked God to see the angels in the sky, the hosts of heaven in the sky, and started taking pictures of them, I have, well, I don't know about millions, but thousands of pictures of angels in the sky. And I've written so far, I think, six books that I have teaching, and then each page has pictures of the hosts of heaven in the sky. I see them everywhere I go. They're all over the place. And so the more honor and attention I give to the hosts that I see in the sky and take pictures, the more I see. At first it started and it snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. And I'm seeing them all the time. I'm asking them what their names are now, what their jobs are now. And soon they'll be manifesting in my house because I've opened my house to the hosts of heaven. I invited them to come onto my land. I'm honoring them. I'm not worshiping them. I'm talking to them because when you partner with God, you partner with the angels. The angels are there to minister to you. They're there to bring answers about. So you talk to the hosts of heaven. If talking to angels is worshiping them, then you'd be worshiping your dog. You'd be worshiping your car because you talk to your car. Oh, you stupid car. Why'd you do that? Why'd you break down? You know, oh, dog, why'd you poop on my floor? Okay. Oh, I love you, doggy. You're not worshiping them. Okay. Okay, so praying in tongues. You can pray in tongues while you're sitting in the bathroom, while you're taking a shower, and I'm like a hot flash right now, and that's under the curse, and I'm not allowing it in Jesus' name. Okay, so in the bathroom, in the shower, in the elevator, walking to your car anytime, pray in tongues. It's so valuable. It will change your life, I guarantee. And that's how, that's how I became an author. When I was 13 years old, God put it in my heart that someday I would be an author, and I tried to write a book then. And, and now they just pop out. I have so many books in me. I just don't have time to get them all done because I'm publishing other people's books and promoting other people. So I don't have time to do it for myself like I'd like to. Although I do want to do that because I bless other people and that's my job. My ministry, part of my ministry right now is sharing and teaching this stuff but also publishing my books and publishing other people's books and promoting their books. So anyway... So, this is the list that the Lord gave me. Oh, one more thing. He said, um, let's see. Oh, sins. He just added this while I was talking. That's what I was writing down. Sins against your body. What have you sinned against your body? Having sex with somebody outside of marriage is a sin against your body. Uh, saying, I'm fat. I'm ugly. I can't lose weight. Saying, um, I have a long nose. Nobody likes me. Um, I hate my hair. I'm too tall. I'm too short. Saying those things are sins against your body. God created you, okay? And he created you awesome. And what you are doing is talking against a creation of God, something that God created. He created you. So if you're saying bad things against your body, you need to repent of that because you need to be speaking God's destiny over your body. Um, I have uh, posture is one of the things that I'm working on correcting. And so I have to find scriptures on posture. I have to find scriptures on whatever I'm going through and confess and speak and decree them over me instead of speaking the negative about my body uh, instead of speaking against it because you're speaking against God. You're going against the destiny that he has for you. So you want to speak. Oh, my fireplace is going. It is so hot in here. 
Um, so you don't want to speak against your destiny. Okay, so when I'm done with this video, I'm going to post it along with my website post where you can download this list and you can share this list. And on the back of this list, it has um, other, it has people who are teaching about the courts of heaven. It has links to Facebook pages, links to their podcast, links to their YouTube, links to their books. People like, uh, um, let me see, people like um, Terry Spencer, Mike Pearson, Eon Clayton, Justin Abram, Jeanette Strauss, Praying Medic, me, Robin Bremer, Kat Kerr, Katie so Souza, people like that. You can get all of their links. I did the research for you. I got all their links. So all you have to do is go to my website on that post. I'll put underneath here and <clears throat> download that PDF file. You can share it however you want. Just make sure I get credit for it because I did all the work and I wrote it. So don't change it and put your name on there or something. But you feel free to share it with your friends and post it on your social media sites. And come back here um, if you want a get the video. I'll also post the video on my website too where you can download it. My website is robinbremer.net. Uh, and if you just go there, you'll see the latest posts. It's about the courts of heaven and you can download it. I'm also an author and a publishing coach. So if you have a book, especially a supernatural book about anything, <clears throat> I publish books for $399. I take your manuscript, I make it into a Kindle book, create a professional book cover. This is the advertisement part. Create a professional book cover and get your ISBN number, format it and everything, make it into a print book and a Kindle book. And this takes about eight weeks or less, roughly, uh, to publish your book. It costs $399. I also promote books. I have been able to bring almost every author I've ever promoted uh, up to number one or at least in the top hundred uh, which is good for you because you can technically say you're a best-selling author it promotes you it gives you more credibility I also um, do other services I will enhance your description on Kindle I will um, let's see promote your book enhance your uh, uh, all kinds of stuff just check out my website robbremer.net so be sure do me a favor give me thumbs up give me comments give me likes and share this with your social media site and your friends. And I hope that this has been a blessing to you. And now I'm going to get out of this hot, hot house and get outside. And um, I will talk to you all later. Love you all. I miss talking to you. Sorry. I'm hot and sweaty. Have a blessed day. And I pray that God opens up your eyes to experience the supernatural relationship on a daily basis to God. And that you walk in the supernatural. And go to Amazon. Type in Robin Bremer. Get some of my books. My angel books. My pictures of angel books. They're awesome. And I have another one coming up soon. I'm hoping by Christmas. It's called. I don't know what it's called. It's about the kingdom of God. And the courts of heaven. And how they. It's called something about DNA. And how it all intertwines. Very good book. I think it's one of my best. And I'm going to really promote it. Um, if you know of anybody that has TV programs. I love being on TV. It's a lot of fun. And um, let them know about me. Talk to you later. Bye.